back to the animalistic, the monster that lies within each of us. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm looking at a book that has been uh, a big part of classic literature, modern classic literature, uh, for a long time and it was a book I did know about but I hadn't read it until now. Definitely needed to do a separate review of it because it's quite a unique and powerful and interesting book. So this is J.G. Ballard's High Rise. Uh, it's a book that creates a, a central conceit, which is that this, there's um, there's this very near future kind of idea where um, these high rise buildings are being built, which are forty stories high, with a thousand residents in them. Um, the the person that uh, the architect of the building is the first resident as well, so he's a central part of the story as well. Uh, and basically, over the course of time, it was filled up, and there's literally a thousand people living in this building. And this building contains loads of modern amenities. It's got a swimming pool, it's got a school, it's got restaurants, it's got loads of different elements. It's got a huge kind of shopping mall, and and um, uh, you know, it's effectively a high street within the building. And it's it's basically like a mini city that's one building so that's kind of the central conceit and the residents that live there have all got like the kind of income that means they deserve to be there but as you go higher on the floors you get like higher stratas of of income and wealth and and privilege if you like so that the people right at the top the top three floors are the sort of richest elements elements of the uh, people who live there um, and there's kind of three stages to the uh, advancement of wealth in the residence of the building and it the book covers the point of view of three main characters it starts off talking about uh, Robert Lang who's a doctor and then um, later on you meet quite quickly you meet Richard Wilder um, who's a uh, a he's always got a cine camera with him and he's trying to film he wants to do a documentary about the building and that plays into the narrative a little bit and then you've got Anthony uh, Royal who is the architect who, who built the building and basically um, it, 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 it introduces these characters but it, it very quickly introduces a situation that is very tense as, you, as the story starts and you've got this sort of rising tension at the beginning with these cocktail parties and this sort of uh, um, vandalism and this sort of abuse that happens between floors and, and a, a rivalry very quickly happens that basically descends into absolute chaos serious chaos the residents of this high-rise building that uh, self-consciously and organically feel that they are removed from the rest of society so they're utterly contained in this building although they, there is this element of these people going back and forth to work but the action is completely contained in this building through the whole story and what happens within the building is evident of the residents feeling like they are utterly trapped in this building and whatever is going to play out in this chaos that ensues has to play out in the building so that's kind of uh, something that is a device of the book that you run with it because of the way it's written and the, because of the sort of central point of the book uh, which i'll get to in a minute so basically i'm not going to spoil it too much but you've basically got a Lord of the Flies kind of story uh, with these adults that start this rivalry that becomes more serious and really violent, really violent. And uh, like I'm talking about uh, sort of the, the vandalism stuff 
so violence against property, but then violence against each other, um, sexual violence as well. All sorts of different elements of violence happen within the characters and within the flaws, and you get you get these different flaws basically becoming like gangs uh, in their rivalry against each other, and this violence uh, basically escalates to a huge degree. So that before you got to half of the book, it's quite chaotic. And uh, a, a lot of the catalyst for this is the way that the immunities stop working and, and they have these power cuts. So they're, they're without light and without power. And that kind of fires these uh, violent acts of, of resentment and pent up frustration and aggression and the relationships between the characters and their wives and and other random women in the in the story play out within this frustration this resentment and this violence as well so the, the whole book is very bleak it's um not got a lot of dialogue in it so one of the things that i think is a quite an interesting feature in the book and it could be ballard style because I've noticed this a bit with the uh, short stories I've read. This is the first full novel I've written. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the first full novel that I've read by Ballard. Uh, and it could be that he, he puts a lot more focus on the descriptive passages rather than the dialogue. So there isn't a lot of dialogue in it. And actually, by the end of the story, the dialogue is almost been replaced. Uh, there's certainly there's one big passage of the book at the end, where it seems to seems like the dialogue's been replaced by sort of whoops and howls and and kind of non-verbal sounds, and I think that is deliberate, and it's kind of where the the book has got to uh, thematically, uh, as well as you know where where the sort of the plot's got to. So. Um, yeah, the, the the relationships between the, the characters are kind of interesting because you've got this central rivalry happening, but it's mostly take, um, looked at from the point of view of these male characters, and the female characters aren't necessarily uh, stereotypes, and they're not necessarily just sort of objects to be moved about, but their but their portrayals are quite slight. There's they're not there's not a lot of detail in them. And their reactions to some of the situations and to the sexual violence is very odd. Um, but I would also say that the, the, in general, all of the characters are quite odd. Um, there's this strange, dispassionate coldness running through the whole thing in the way that the characters act. And the characters don't seem to care about what they're doing. And they don't seem to feel any of the consequences either. And they don't seem to have any real point to what they're doing. And it's literally just venting and lashing out. But that's the point. I think what Ballard's doing is, is basically saying that once you get these few catalysts at the beginning of the story to spark this antagonism, it just gets quite crazy quite quickly. And the characters in the story revert to this barbaric nature that becomes quite animalistic by the end of it because it's their it's their way i think the point is that it's their waiting to come out that within humans we've all got this rage and this resentment and this ability to um simplify and justify and rationalize utter complete violence in a situation where we just get pushed a little bit, we just get nudged a little bit. And in a situation where we're all sort of stuck together and with a, uh, a thousand people in one 40 story building, it's like a, a hot house waiting to blow. And that's the point of the book, I think. And it's the, uh, it's the book that is, it's a book that plays out in a way that, is utterly compelling, but not as much through the characters. So, so there's enough characterization so that you are pulled through the characters, but it's not something that Ballard plays with much. 
and it's more about the clever way I think that he creates tension very early on and you can see that something is about to happen and when it does start happening it's this sort of this it's like a frustration that builds through a number of different things and a few different characters that just gets worse and worse and a few incidents that are kind of extreme but isolated and then it just lets go and it just goes full tilt and it, you, you're reading it wondering where it's, how it's going to end uh, and the ending I think is quite interesting it's quite unexpected it's almost open ended but not quite again I won't spoil it but it does suggest that what the book is saying is bigger than the building very very subtly and uh, yeah it's a very powerful book and it's a really interesting book and it just, I couldn't wait to finish it. I, 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 and it wasn't because I wanted to get rid of it, but, but because the tension was so palpable and it was so well written. So, so yeah, uh, I definitely recommend it. It's very, it's very extreme. And if I've thought about, I don't know if I've got it here. Have I got it here? Uh, I haven't got it here um, on me. But if I think about, Blindness by Jose Saramago. I was reminded a few times with that book because Saramago's blindness sets up the idea that everybody goes blind and the, and the barbaric animalistic ways that you know, gangs form, leaders form. You know, it's very much the idea that the strongest uh, push their way into leadership and people are victimised and abused and there's sexual violence in blindness as well. And all these different things happen in blindness because everyone's blind. And obviously with this one, the violence and the those sort of um, alpha male leadership things and all those kind of things happen because of being cooped up in this high-rise building. I think it's a comparative situation, but I do think the prose of Ballard's book has a lot more uh, fire in its belly. It's a lot more... Um, lively and and it sort of it leaps about a little bit more there's more life to the prose i think saramago i love what he does but it's much drier and i think this has a lot more it's still it's still quite dispassionate and it is still quite shocking how the characters just do these things and don't seem to be affected that much and just driven by it rather than reflected by it or being reflective from it they're just driven by this animalistic urge for the whole thing so that's you know an unusual and a um a decision that that he's made to make these characters act like this so it is quite dispassionate in that sense in a similar way to saramago's blindness but i think saramago's blindness is colder and that it's it's more kind of flat the way it's described um i don't want to criticize blindness i think it's an incredible book but this does have a lot more of a uh energetic narrative voice which i think pulls you along a lot more and it makes you uh really keen to find out what's going to happen next so i do think it's kind of interesting the way that's done so the pace is is driven by the uh style of the narrative voice I mean, lots of things happen quickly. And uh, also, it's an interesting thing that the uh, there's, a, there's a huge part that in this book played by the dogs in the story. There's a lot of dogs in it. Um, and I think it could be because dogs being abused or at risk or t paying a part in a narrative like this is quite effective for a lot of people that would have a strong affection for dogs. So I do think that's... And, and, and also, it's realistic that that many people there would be dogs in there um because dogs are such a big part of society so so that's quite a clever trick to also get us having this emotive reaction to what's happening as well um so the dogs play a part in this as well so yeah it's a fascinating book it's a compelling book it's a very extreme and uncomfortable book to read sometimes um but yeah it's it's a very interesting 
journey through a bleak vision of how animalistic and brutal humanity can be once it just has a few nudges to get that primal urge going. So there we go. High Rise. Very interesting book. Uh, and really glad I read it. And, and it, it's, I think the more I read of Ballard, I think he's going to prove to be quite a stark, vicious author, uh, which is interesting. <laughs> so anyway, have you read High Rise? Is this how you reacted? Uh, did, you, did you like it? Uh, let me know in the comments. Thanks a lot. Wait.